and um, at the bottom of the page, please, under communication with post office, you say, um, once we have the information above, which will enable us to identify the full scope, we need to communicate this to post office limited through the problem management mechanisms. We then need to get uh, post office to agree if and how we should be correcting the data. Why did you think there was a possibility that you might not correct the data? We didn't correct the data in, in the branches. As it, what we did was we actually corrected the data in the post office's back end systems. Uh, post office should also be able to check up on Polsat to confirm these discrepancies are still visible, even though they've been lost in branch. It should be noted that as discrepancies are normally losses, um, uh, then a lost discrepancy would need to work in the branch's favour, so there's no incentive for the branch to report the problem. Also, if we do amend the data to reintroduce the discrepancy, this will need to be carefully communicated to the branches to avoid questions about the system integrity. And we never did amend but, the data. In the yes, branches. but just um, b before you get that answer in too quickly, um, why would you... In, if you did amend the data, need carefully to communicate that to the branches in order to avoid questions about system integrity? Well, I could see that this was an important problem. I, I, I didn't want to be amending the data in the branches, and we, we, we didn't amend the data. Oh, no, 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 that's yeah. a different yeah. issue. Um, if, it was badly, here, here, if it was badly communicated, it could show that, uh, that there, were, there were serious problems within the ongoing operation of Horizon Online, and we clearly didn't want to do that. So it wasn't a case of covering up. We just didn't want to have bad publicity for what was actually a very isolated problem. That's not what this says. You well, wanted to avoid questions about system integrity, didn't you? That, that, was, that, that was behind what I was trying to say at the time. Well, on this um, document, that's all that was behind your, what you wanted to say. You wanted to avoid questions being raised about the system's integrity, didn't you? I didn't think I. I didn't think there was anything fundamentally wrong, and I wanted to ensure that things were actually communicated accurately. This isn't about um, the accurate or inaccurate communication of information to branches. It's about avoiding questions concerning the system's integrity. That's your motive, isn't it? No, I was, in, I was, my motive was to make sure the communications were done accurately. Why didn't you say, if we do amend the data, we must communicate that to the branches accurately? Perhaps that's what I should have said at the time. But to say, um, I, I wasn't exploring every word that I wrote in an internal document, uh, expecting to be um, picked apart in the way that's being picked apart now. Apologies for picking it apart. I'm just trying to work out what was operative on your mind at the time. Operative on my mind was that we didn't want to blow this out of proportion. This was a, a relatively small problem that was affecting a very small number of branches, and we didn't want to actually... Uh, undermine the overall system which was affected which was working perfectly correctly in many many branches um, and this was a problem that was going to get fixed and it was easily scoped and identifiable at that you didn't know any of that at this time you told us that there'd only been a backward look for 30 days you thought this went back to January yes rather than May you didn't know the extent of the problem at all but I knew a that a limited we were... problem affecting a small number of branches that was easily fixed when you were writing this sentence, did you? I, I was aware that we, uh, I, I had a fairly good idea of what the sort of scope was going to be. Um, at this point, we'd identified 16 branches. I, I could see that we would identify a few further branches. Uh, and as I say, the eventual figure was about 60 something. I'm gonna continue the picking apart, if I may. The reason that you use these words was because that's what you were thinking at the time, isn't it? It's not a poor choice of words. It's not a choice of words that was in error. 
It's not a choice of words that reflects something that you didn't think. You wanted to avoid questions about Horizon Systems integrity, didn't you? I don't think that's true, but... Uh, can you see, um, in respect of um, this meeting, in, res in relation to which you were recorded as an attendee, under the heading impact at the bottom, if that can be blown up. Thank you. Um, impact branch have appeared to balance, whereas in fact they could have gained a loss or uh, they could have had a loss or gain. Two, our accounting systems will be out of sync with what's recorded at the branch. Um, three, if widely known, could cause a loss of confidence in the horizon system by um, branches. Just stopping there at the third bullet point, if widely known, it, the receipts and payments mismatch bug, could cause a loss of confidence in the horizon system by branches. You were at um, this meeting. Um, did you say that? I don't know, it's a simple answer. I, I don't think so, but uh, I, I don't know. Do you recall who did say that? No, I have no recollection of, of, of whether this was one meeting or a consolidated report of all the meetings, I've no idea. I, don't, I, I remember being on conference calls about the issue, but what was said in detail on the conference calls, I have no recollection, I'm afraid. Was there any face-to-face -face meeting, as far as you can remember, or were they all conference calls? I th there were face-to-face -face meetings internally within Fujitsu, but in terms of communication with the post office, I think it was all conference calls. So, so this list of people we see at the start of this document, which is both post office and Fujitsu, was there ever an occasion when you were all in the same room together discussing it? I don't it? believe so. Right, fine. Yeah. Was there ever an occasion when you were all on the same call? I can't remember exactly, uh, say, I thought there was just one call. I've since seen suggestions there were two or three calls, and I just can't remember the details, I'm afraid. Was the outcome of the calls a, um, an agreement that if the problem was widely known, it could cause a loss of confidence in the Horizon system by branches, as I recorded here? I, I don't know. Um, uh, my, my role in these calls was explaining what the issue was technically, not in terms of, and, and uh, understanding what it was that was going to be decided in terms of how we fixed it moving forward. That was my main focus. Um, if a view was expressed in the call or calls, um, whether by Fujitsu, um, including you, or by the post office, that if the receipts and payments mismatch bug was widely known, it could cause a loss of confidence by branches in the Horizon um, system. Did that fact, did that view as it expressed, affect your willingness to mention it in court in the following weeks when you gave evidence? No, it never occurred to me that it was relevant because, as I said earlier, this was an issue with Horizon Online and where I was giving evidence was to do with Legacy Horizon. The next bullet point, therefore, uh, becomes relevant. Potential impact upon ongoing legal cases where branches are disputing the integrity of Horizon data. By this time, I think only two branches have been identified in respect of which there were ongoing court cases, correct? No idea. We looked at the um, report earlier, didn't we? One of them was... That was in a different context. That was when we were looking back at uh, ARQ data back in June. Uh, by this time, had um, any court cases been identified? I don't know. I, d I don't recall any mention of uh, legal cases as part of this discussion. That wasn't where I was focused on what I was concerned with at this point was the technical aspects of this issue. I have no recollection of discussion of legal implications of this. What, what um, to your knowledge, um, ongoing legal cases were there? I, I wasn't aware of any legal cases involved with Horizon Online at that time. Well, no, it doesn't say Horizon Online, does it? 
it simply says ongoing legal cases. I you knew about one, didn't you? A big one, Seema Misra's case. Yes, um, but I, I, I didn't see it as being relevant to that, and I, and I would not have taken it as being relevant in, in uh, the, the, that statement was referring to that at all. What ongoing legal cases were there concerning Horizon Online? I don't know. I wasn't. I, I wasn't aware of any. Were there? Were I there any know. at all? I don't know. I, I, I don't understand the context of that. I mean, I understand now what the context of that is, but at the time, I wouldn't have. Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't have known what that was about, and I'm not sure if I'd even have noticed if anyone said anything along those lines. Did you say that that it uh, the bug has a potential impact on ongoing legal cases? No. Uh, who said that? I've no idea. I say I don't even remember hearing that being said. It's clearly recorded there in the minutes. You agree that it's a record um, in this document of the receipts and payments mismatch bug having a potential impact upon ongoing cases. Given the start date of Horizon Online, you would have known at this time that the um, likelihood of there being any ongoing legal cases involving Horizon Online was minimal or even zero. I have no recollection of there being discussion about legal cases as part of the, these exchanges. I've subsequently seen, as part of the work with the inquiry, that there was discussion along those lines, but at the time, I'm not sure that I would have even noticed that sort of thing being mentioned. I was concerned about the technical aspects of this problem. And so, if it was discussed at a call or calls, that the uh, bug had an impact or pot potential impact on ongoing legal cases, that wouldn't have affected your willingness or otherwise to mention it in the Seema Misra case? No, because as far as I was concerned, it was totally irrelevant. Now, if someone had then come and said, I should mention it, I would probably have argued against it, but if they said, no, you've got to do it for legal reasons, then obviously I would have done. And we know, in fairness to you, that you had disclosed it in your note of the 28th, 29th of um, September 2010, and we know that that was forwarded to Post Office Legal, John L. Singh. Yes, I, I've learned that as part of the work I've done for the inquiry, yes. The last bullet point, it could uh, provide branches with ammunition to blame Horizon for future discrepancies. Uh, do you recall who said that? No, I don't, I'm afraid. But whether that was somebody from post office or Fujitsu? I've no idea, I'm afraid, sorry. Do you agree that these three bullet points taken together seem to reflect a concern about disclosure of the receipts and payments mismatch bug in that it would have um, undesirable consequences? <coughs> I can understand that now, but as I say, I don't think I was conscious of that sort of discussion as part of the meeting at the time. Uh, can we go forward, please, to page three? Um, we can see the solutions. I think you'll be familiar with these. Yes. If we scroll down, thank you. Uh, which one did you support? where it was sorted out on the back end. Um, so I think that's solution two, is two. It? Where, where it gets uh, journaled in um, Pulse App. And that was the one I believe that was eventually done. The first and the third solution are said to have moral implications. Um, the first because it would involve changing branch data without informing the branch and the third um, implications, moral implications to the integrity of the business. Can you see that? Yes, I don't remember the term moral implications being used there, but I was certainly it was, uh, um, I, I was always favoring the, uh, the second option, doing things in the back end. I, I felt that was the right way of doing things. And as I say, that was what was eventually done. The first solution um, was said to have significant data integrity concerns and could lead to questions of tampering with the branch system and could generate questions about how the, or around how the discrepancy was caused. Is that because 
that this would involve Fujitsu manually writing um, uh, values um, into branch accounts. That, that is how that would have been done, and I was against doing that. And why were you against doing it? Because I think it was the wrong thing to do. It was much better to actually sort things out through a, a business process that was there in the back end of journalising the entries in Pulse App. That discussion revealed, of course, that the facility was available to uh, Fujitsu, a form of remote access. I wouldn't call that a form of remote access as such. I think I, I, um, because what we would have had to do was we would have had to develop a specific bit of code to actually um, make those sort of changes um, to, to those affected branches. And uh, so it wouldn't have been using any uh, of the regular remote access type um, facilities that, w that uh, we had. So it would have been a special bit of code that would have been developed and tested specifically for that, for that purpose. But again, that wasn't the way that we went. Was consensus reached on that in the meeting? I can't remember the actual discussion, but it was certainly a solution two that was, that was done going forward in terms of actually sorting things out at the back end. I can't remember the discussions behind it and how long those discussions were. Thank you. Uh, can we move on, please, um, to the evidence that you gave at trial um, by looking at poll 3029406. Uh, can you see this is the 14th of October 2010 at the Crown Court at Guildford? And if we scroll down, it's a transcript of the proceedings. Yes and it's a, a transcript of your evidence. If we go forward to page 123, please. And just go down at H. The foot of the page, thank you. Um, Re-examination, so that's uh, questions at the end of your evidence session being asked by the prosecution barrister, Mr. Tapford. And he says, are there problems that the sub-postmaster at the post office is going to be um, unaware of? Can you see that? Yes. And you say most problems manifest themselves so they can be visible. So, for example, if there was some problem with balancing and so on, then that, that I would expect to be investigated to see whether there was an underlying problem as a result of it. The question that you were asked, are there problems that a sub-postmaster at the post office is going to be unaware of? You say most problems manifest themselves so they can be visible. Yes. A month earlier, you'd been dealing with a problem that didn't manifest itself in an obvious way to the sub-postmaster. It did manifest. It's, it was visible. Um, if, if, you, if, if you actually read through the BTS, there was a non-zero entry in the BTS where there should be a zero entry. I think you'd said already that um, that's if you examine them carefully or yes. a similar phrase. Was your reason for not mentioning that here because that was to do with Horizon Online and you thought you were asking, answering questions only about Legacy Horizon? I was certainly thinking I was only talking about Legacy Horizon. And does that answer apply to across the transcript? Yes. That, that it, it, even if questions are asked of you in a broad way, like that one was, which wasn't specifically about Legacy Horizon, you thought you were talking and only talking about Legacy Horizon? Yes. Can I turn to the extent to which you were asked to consider, uh, consider wider issues uh, when you were providing your witness statements and giving evidence? And just um, start by looking at your witness statement, your third witness statement, at page 125. It's just what you say at the, um, the end of paragraph 369. Uh, the last three, four lines... You're dealing here with um, uh, the event timeout locking issues. And you say 
in the last four lines, uh, nor have I seen any emails that, su that suggest my raising these event timeout locking issues prompted anyone within post office or Fujitsu to ask me to provide a witness statement about any other past problems that had affected Horizon. Yes. By that, are you saying that you don't um, uh, more generally recall being asked to provide a witness statement about any past problems that had affected Horizon? Yes, I think that's what I'm saying. What I, was, what I thought I was being asked to look at and what I think I was looking at was specific problems at the specific branch and I found no evidence of any specific problems at the branch. I'd raised with people um, within post office um, the fact that I was aware of problems that didn't affect that branch and no one said, oh, in that case you need to talk about it and put it in your witness statement. You say, th th therefore, that you don't think you were being asked to provide witness statements or a witness statement about any past problems that had affected Horizon. Uh, can we look back, please, at FUJ 0012 2794? Uh, we looked at this email first thing um, this morning. John L. Singh. And we see that you're copied. And he's, uh, Mr. Singh has said that points two to four haven't been answered. And three, when Gareth completes his statement, did he also mention whether there are any known problems with the Horizon system that Fujitsu are aware of? So you had been asked that very question. And I'd responded to it at the time, saying that until I looked at the logs, I wasn't able to make a clear statement. And then uh, nothing further was actually done about that, so I thought that that had been addressed. Well, um, let, let's break that down. In your witness statement, you said that nobody asked me to provide a statement about any other past problems that had affected Horizon. This is a request to do exactly that, isn't it? Um, I've not considered it that way when I was putting together the witness statement. No, but looking at it now, it's a request to do exactly that, isn't it? I've not seen it that way, but yeah, possibly. So you'd have been asked that question, the broad question of known problems with Horizon, through the lawyer's route, I'm going to call it, sing to you, yes? Yes. Can we look, please, at FUJ... 0015-2902. Uh, page two, please. Can you see an email? Um, John Longman to Penny Thomas. Yes? Yes. On the 1st of February. If we just scroll up, just the bottom of the page there, Penny Thomas, to you, please see below, this is extremely urgent. So you get forwarded this chain. We go back to where we were, top of page two. So Longman to Thomas, I'm going to call this the investigator's route rather than the lawyer's route. Um, at a pre-court hearing uh, today, the judge has ordered that all defence requests uh, be answered. And then Gareth's statement needs to cover the four following points. And then do you see three? When Gareth completes his statement, he should also mention whether there are any known problems with the Horizon system that Fujitsu are aware of. If none, this, uh, could this be clarified in the statement? So in fact, far from what you say in your witness statement that nobody had asked me to provide a statement about any other past problems that had affected Horizon, you were asked that very question twice, weren't you? Well, I didn't, I didn't respond to that either way. Well, let's just agree, you were asked the question twice, weren't you? Once through the lawyer's route and once through the investigator's route. 
I'd not consider it in, in that way. I know you um, say that yeah. you hadn't, but the fact of the matter is, rather than you not being asked the question about broader issues or problems with Horizon at all, you'd in fact been asked it twice, once by a lawyer and once through an investigator's email, hadn't you? It looks like it. Can we scroll up to um, what um, you replied? Uh, I finally managed to go through the witness statements, etc. I don't know anything presently about Falkirk. And then I'm not aware of issues in Horizon other than the event timeouts. Not sure how to cover that in the witness statement. Which is basically the same thing as I said to uh, David Jones later in the week. Well, firstly, do you agree that that answer there in that third paragraph is your response to the question or the request to cover whether there are any known problems with her the Horizon system that Fujitsu are aware of? I, I think it probably was, yes. So that's a direct response to the broad uh, question. You were aware of issues in Horizon other than the event timeouts, weren't you? Not ones that were still outstanding. Is that what you say? I, I'd assume that as part of the context, but uh, I accept that I didn't spell it out. The context is um, framed by the question that you were asked. Are there any known problems with the Horizon system that Fujitsu are aware of? That's talking about the operation of Legacy Horizon at the very least, isn't it? I wasn't understanding the question that way, but I can understand that that may have been what was meant. You say that you, this answer is supposed to read, I'm not aware of any outstanding issues in Horizon other than the event timeouts which have not been resolved. Why would you not say that if that's um, the meaning that you now attribute to those words? I don't know is the simple answer. That statement there is not true, is it? I'm not aware of issues in Horizon other than the event timeouts. I was thinking of uh, outstanding issues, but I can accept that I have not qualified it correctly. So you were asked twice, once by John Longman and once by John L. Singh, explicitly to mention any known problems with the Horizon system. Why on both occasions have you applied a restrictive approach rather than simply mentioning all of the problems that you were aware of? That was not how I'd understood the question, but I accept now that I've misunderstood the question. Or was it an unwillingness to reveal known problems with Horizon? I think it was a case of me misunderstanding the question.